Welcome to this week's Money Week video. And this week I want to take on a topic that a couple of people have asked me about and takes me back to my very first video on what is a PE ratio. Now at Money Week we love PE ratios as a way potentially of judging whether a stock is cheap or expensive. And I will spend a very short session in a moment refreshing your memory on what PE ratios are and then for more do feel free to see my earlier video on the topic. The question I've been asked is can you trust PE ratios? Are there any other questions that I need to ask? And the answer is yes. PE ratios can be fantastic in the right hands, but there are two or three situations I want to hint at where a PE ratio by itself will let you down and you might need to look elsewhere for supporting information. Okay, so what is a PE ratio? It takes me back to the beginning of the series. Uh, in a nutshell, it's a way of determining whether a stock is cheap or expensive by comparing the current share price to one year's earnings. So, very fast recap. Do see my earlier video for more. If the current share price is £2.50, 250 pence, and let's say forecast earnings for the next financial year, this will give us a forward PE, our 50p. You have a price to earnings ratio of five times. Okay? And as a rule of thumb, the lower that ratio is, the well, less expensive the share is in earnings terms. Now, people have said to me, well, that's great. So as a value investor, I could go hunting around for low PE stocks. And that would be a sensible place to start. And you'll see plenty of comment in Money Week magazine, for example, on the very subject of hunting down low PE bargain stocks, buying when others are fearful, in other words because a low PE ratio suggests the share price has been marked down by the market to a relatively low multiple of one year's earnings. And that might be where you want to jump in and buy. But is it always the case, therefore, you can just run around looking for low PE stocks? Can investing really be quite that simple? And the answer is no. So in this video, as I've been asked to do, I want to just give two or three sort of warnings specifically on the PE ratio, okay? And then I'll suggest a cure at the end, all right? Now, a few warnings, first of all. Does that number, tell you anything about risk, really? The answer is no, okay? Maybe the reason this stock has a low price to earnings ratio is nervousness in the market. Maybe the share price has been dragged down relative to earnings for a reason. Maybe the company's carrying a lot of debt, for example, and that's not always easy to deduce from a PE ratio. So far from being cheap, this stock is also risky, and that's been factored in by investors. Right? And that's something that a plain P ratio by itself doesn't really give you the full picture on. So there's caveat number one. All right? Caveat number two is this. How big is the company you're looking at? Right? There's another risk in here, which is, you know, if I said to you, well, there's a company available with a P ratio of five times, or you can buy one on a P ratio of 10 times, a value investor would say, well, I'll take the first one, thanks, because that looks cheaper relative to earnings. But what if this is a tiny company with a, you know, the equivalent of a market capitalization, a value of only, say, a million pounds? And this one is a massive company, or much bigger, maybe a hundred million market capitalization. Well, suddenly you've got the risk associated with buying a relatively illiquid, maybe small capitalization company. And that has its own sort of pitfalls. You like. So a P ratio by itself, you know, you've got to be comparing like for like. You've got to be looking at companies of a similar size in a similar sector. In other words, comparing apples to apples before you jump in too quickly and say, oh, that's cheap. And forget about the other risk, which is what I call liquidity or trading risk. Okay? And here's a third idea. All right? Here's a third idea. You're offered a chance to buy, let's say, a stock um, with a P ratio of uh, 10 times or a PE ratio of 20 times, all right? Those are your choices. And you're thinking, I know, I'll go for the cheaper one, the one with 10. And you're looking at companies in a sort of similar sector and so on, maybe a similar profile. Would you just jump in? Well, no, because there's another catch here, which is you also need to think about, well, okay, 10 times one year's earnings is cheaper than 20 times one year's earnings. What am I buying? Am I not buying the potential for earnings to grow in the future? I need earnings growth because otherwise I'm never going to get my money back. There's no point in paying £2.50 if earnings is going to fall off a cliff. I'll have wasted my money. Okay? So if you're looking at, say, two stocks, one with a PE of 10, one of 20, 
you need to look at something called the earnings growth rate. And you can get that by looking at two or three years earnings, okay? But my point is this, um, if this company has an earnings growth rate of say 10% a year, and this company has an earnings growth rate of let's say 50% a year, do you still want to buy the company on the left? Okay. Some of you say there's not enough information, but with the information you've got, would you want to buy the company on the left? Okay. Because this suggests the price to earnings growth rate, otherwise known as the PEG, which I cover in another video, is only a one here, one for one if you like, and here the P-E ratio to earnings growth rate is, you can see the math is quite easy there, 20 over 50 is 0.4. So the one on the right is cheaper in earnings growth terms than the one on the left, despite having the higher P ratio. Right, so there's my point, is that P ratios in isolation, uh, that's the question I was asked, can be dangerous. Right? It's tempting to trust one number, and we do put quite a bit of faith on the P ratio, but you do have to ask some quite sensible questions around the edges first. Okay, have I got a proper handle on risk? And I've suggested a couple of types, and secondly, what do I know about the earnings growth rate for these firms and does that influence my view of which one I'd pick? Okay. Now, uh, for those people who would like to carry on receiving my videos free every week, straight to your inbox, um, do feel free, please, to sign up to moneyweek.com forward slash Tim Ratios. You'll also get a little gauntlet of extra videos uh, related to this topic and a free piece of jargon explained in what should be easy to understand language. See you next week.